today I'm going to do a quick review on this burns matic Metalwork solder. I'm pretty sure I used this stuff once before and it was horrible. I do like the 430 degree Fahrenheit aspect of it. Now it says silver bearing. That's kind of hype in my opinion sometimes because the fact they didn't give us the actual ratio is kind of uh, ticks me off a little bit. It's a little bit fraudulent in my opinion. Secondly, silver solder is not all that great stuff to work with. It's, it's the silver solder I've used in the past is an actual pain in the ass to use. You gotta have really high heats and all that stuff, I know, but today we're just gonna do a quick little uh, solder joint on this spud. And um, I got one other spot. I was actually even thinking about hitting this with some solder, even though it might damage. My relief valve because i don't think uh, teflon tape is going to seal that bad boy so i just want to see how this stuff does on a quick joint and uh so yeah let's check it out i've got an absolute mess going here today i kind of think i need to put a needle valve on here instead I'm on the fence so if I... all right I'm sorry for the mess fellas I hope you can see that okay I am in the heat of the battle right here so I have got every tool I have needed today on this table it's gonna be quite the cleanup so here we go this is the uh, metal work burns a last time I used this stuff it was horrible <laughs> a little better this time around it's got a nice flow to it now I have used a lot of solders too and I've done a lot of soldering in my day I'm not a plumber but I am a fabricator and uh, it's disappointing I couldn't replace that Linux solder today that stuff is amazing and it doesn't claim to have silver in it or nothing like that it's just straight up Okay, yeah, this stuff's a little bit problematic here. Lead solder would have just... Now, the reason why you see me just keep stabbing it with solder is for two reasons. I'm doing something called the braiding, which is actually physically scraping off any oxide layers. And secondly, we're introducing more flux into the area. That's the main purpose of that. I know it looks like I'm wasting solder, but I'm actually washing the part as we go by doing that. The reason why I didn't just do a standard compression fitting on this particular thing is because after using this stuff for so many years, I've come to the conclusion that it's just not good for anything over 30 some PSIs. It's really not. It, uh, They leak damn near no matter what you do, and it just gets old. Putting a bunch of machinery together and then walking through and tightening up four or five of these things, that gets to be a real pain in the ass, especially when you're pumping, you know, caustic solutions or stuff like that. So I just solder them anymore. I don't even bother. They just, they leak, it, especially if it's a gas. This is just some, some Menards hardware here, you know. This stuff isn't, it's not all that great. Maybe you can get them to work, but I can't. So, I don't know. It didn't do too bad. I haven't tried it on steel yet. I will go ahead and get a clip of this stuff working on some steel here later on. Um, but yeah, for that, it gave me a little problem on the bottom. Oh, wait a second, I spoke too soon. 
take that back. I'm not liking the solder. See that right there, it didn't join. Now I know I didn't clean that part or nothing very well, but um, I did give it a little brush. Typically, a standard like lead, a 60-40 solder, just has no problems whatsoever adhering to parts. Yeah, that's a pretty horrible flow right there, guys. Sorry. Yeah, that is just a piss poor flow. This, uh, yeah, it's working the same way it did last time. Um, so if you're interested in picking some of this up. Okay, this stuff's definitely going on the don't buy list. <laughs> Yeah, lead, some good lead acid would have uh, sealed that bad boy up right quick. So no, failed the test. Failed the damn test. I'm never buying this stuff again. If you want some good solder, fellas, this is the stuff. Now, I don't go lead free for environmental reasons. My purpose is, is health concerns. Sometimes I have to, uh, do a little machining on stuff that I built, you know, and lead particles are just not a very fun thing to breathe in, in my opinion. So I've been staying away from the acid core lead solder, even though it, it, it is probably the best flowing solder there is, and that's why it's still around. For instance, this stuff right here, some uh, 60 lead, 4010. This is, um, where is that made? Hecko? Anyway, <clears throat> this is some pretty good solder. But like I said, once you get it on the parts, uh, you're done. You can't grind on it or nothing. And it's very weak, very susceptible to heat shock, very low melting point. So I've moved on to this stuff here and I'm just amazed how well it works. However, no store carries this. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of where you can get this. And I'm also gonna buy some off of Amazon. And I'm gonna do a little solder showdown to see what is the best stuff. Because um, it, it'd just be nice to know. I've always wanted to know what is the best solder. And over the years of using a bunch of junk, I am now in a position where I can provide that information. I'm going to be doing the same thing with these cutting discs too. I came across these really nice German cutoff wheels. This here is called a duo disc. Onyx. It does stainless steel also. It's a little bit thicker. But I've never seen German cutoff wheels. There's another one. Check that out, man. I'm interested to see how durable they are. This costs 99 cents. Or maybe it was this one. This one was a dollar. This was three dollars. So we'll be doing a lot of stuff like that. But in the meantime, I don't think I'm a fan of burns matic solder products anymore. They do make a mean torch though. Definitely liking this thing and it has a lifetime warranty. Got quite a few videos on that also. Okay, I've got a piece of steel here set up. I'm gonna see if I can get a bead rain on this. Should be able to solder on this, no problem, if this is a good solder. I mean, after all, it says metal works on it. I'm gonna do some abrading. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bead. The stick there it looks like. I don't know.
Yeah, it's just kind of stopping on me. A good acid core wouldn't be doing this. So it did tin up a bit there. Actually, it didn't tin up worth a crap. Metal works my ass. Yeah, this stuff's just pathetic. Perhaps a good scratch would have been better. As I said, I know it looks like I'm wasting it, but I'm abrading and introducing new flux at the same time. Yeah, I don't know, fellas. That, that ain't worth the crap. I did get it to 10, but it's just, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, it's just, it's real picky about where it's wanting to stick. Even with a good abrading, the abrading helps. So we did uh, lay a nice little feed there. Man, that splattered hard. Still just not quality. Fairly poor performing. It will do it. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's not a total loss. Not a total loss. Didn't get any action at all on this piece of stainless steel. That I didn't even bother uh, recording that. But uh, at any rate, just worthy of noting, you might want to steer clear of this stuff. But if you have to, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's a little bit better than some. It's better than the other uh, acid cores, the uh, non-lead versions anyway. This is still the best yet. So there you have it. Just thought I'd share that with you. I'm, I'm going through the process of uh, trying to find out what is the best product to use in these scenarios and then cataloging that information. Now, fellas, before you beat me up too bad in the comments, I want you to understand something. What that demonstration showed was that this solder didn't work on a poorly prepared joint. Some of you may tell me that. The reason why I didn't prepare that joint is because I know lead solder well enough to, to know what it will and will not do. And I can tell you right now that regular acid core solder would have just soldered this stuff up no problem with no cleaning or nothing. I've had no problems with it and this stuff I did clean up some of these parts and it still didn't stick very well but regardless of that what I'm trying to say I guess is the fact that it didn't do well on a, a, a fairly poorly prepared surface tells me that it's not going to do well in in some other scenarios as well you just kind of get a feel for the stuff this stuff probably won't silver solder metal very good I'm gonna try that real quick, but um, it's it's just kind of a, you get a sense of it. If it does really well on poorly prepared surfaces, it's gonna be a good solder. This stuff will do that. This stuff will not. So it's just, I'm not saying that um, it's the worst solder in the world. I mean, it, it did work, but you just gotta really clean the parts. And let's be honest, who the hell has time to to do all that sometimes especially when you're just building something i mean i just i want to get this damn thing together i don't have time for all that nonsense but uh just a thought on the subject